In section 341 of Mastering Cisco Firepower 7.0 with Todd Lamley, we're going to cover clustering with the new Cisco 3100 Threat Defense. Let's just jump in and start configuring. Okay, from my FMC here, I've got some 1010s in here that are running high availability, 1150s high availability. I cannot cluster these, nor 2100 as well. So I've got 1010s, 1150s, I got some 4100s, virtuals as you've seen in a different FMC. But I have two 3120s in here. Brand new, no configuration. If you're going to cluster, remember, you can't have a config and say, well, let me go to cluster now and keep my config. It doesn't work that way. Now, I'm not showing the high availability like I did with, say, the 1150s, 4100s, and so on, because this is done exactly the same way. So there is no firepower extensible operating system that's configured through chassis manager, like when with the 4100s, 9300s. We can manage the chassis here a little bit, and we'll go ahead and take a look at that. But I want to go ahead and just talk about clustering because this is something we can do with the 3100s that we can't do with the 1100s or 2100s. With the 4100s, 9300s, we know if you haven't, you'll see in the next videos how much more difficult it is to cluster a 4100, 9300 how much work it takes, how much time, and so on. You do have to remember that when you're doing this, if your network's up, it will go down. If you make any changes in your cluster, it will go down, and so on. So let's go ahead and take a look at Manage here. And we can't do a lot, but we'll go ahead and click on Manage there for the chassis. There is no separate chassis manager. So I have my management here. That That's how we're in. I have two network modules. And we can see the physical interfaces, which ones are SFP. But notice I can't change anything here. I'm only seeing this. It says, hey, we'll go to interface page in device details. Understood, I can do all that. But this is just giving me some information about the chassis in itself. So let me come back up here to device management. And when we come back in here, I see I have two 3120s, same licenses. And when I brought them in, I just added the same ACP. You have to add an ACP when you bring a device in. So if I come over and look at here, if I click on the three dots, we can see just the regular stuff that we see everywhere else and that we can manage them individually. Now, if I come in here, there's nothing in here differently than any of my other FTDs or secure firewall threat defense boxes. The new names kill me. So we can see all my interfaces here. Now I can configure them. However, if I was to come in here and configure this going, well, I want this to be my outside and this is my inside, it's going to come back and go, hey, you can't cluster. You can't have anything on the physical interfaces. We're going to have to create port channels. So let's come back in here and just create this cluster. So how do we do this? Well, first off, I have a cable connecting port eights together, directly connected. So let's go ahead and say add. Notice this cluster here. Cluster name 3120. Now you can't do a dash, you'll get an error. So underscore easy key to remember. And the first node, the one that you want to be the controller. And notice none of the other devices come up, only these two, which can cluster here. If there was a problem here, like say you had to have it deployed or you had names on the interfaces, something, you had something configured, you'd get an exclamation point, a red error here. It wouldn't let you move on. So now I'm going to go ahead and put an address in here. Notice it's a network address. And these are the addresses for the devices that are going to be in the cluster. So how many can there be? Well, in this case, 30 is my least. And notice uh, I'm, I'm going to say which interface am I going to use now? It automatically assigned the first address here. I had to go to the second device, the second node, and enable 1.8. It'll enable 1.8 on this guy, but not the second one. So that was one thing I didn't show you. I went and enabled it in the second FTD. That's the only thing I've configured on either one of these boxes since I've reset them to basically factory default. And so here it is right here. It already put the IP address. No errors shown so far. This one's priority two, priority one, and I can keep adding them here. So we're going to sit here and wait for a little bit. And then once this comes up and works, hopefully it right away, then we can go do some verification. All right, looks like it's done finally. Got a little thing that says, check the device, save the interface changes, nothing real big. Let's take a look at some of the stuff we can do. Notice now we only have the one manage, but we can click the pencil here to edit the device. More actions here, add nodes. I can add nodes to the cluster, break the nodes, edit the configuration. So if I edit this, and notice I can't add anything here. 
I can make some changes, but it tells you right here, if you make changes and hit continue, it is going to do a bootstrap change and it's going to bring down the network. So be careful if you change something here. Now here's where we probably really want to go. Cluster live status. This is going to show us, notice we're in sync. This is my control device. Summary, history. Now, if there's an issue and it's like you've kind of lost sync or whatever, they say go click reconcile all and let it try to reconcile before you break the cluster, before you do all this. And this will refresh the screen if we see any errors. So we could say summary and it'll tell us some information about the device, mostly just the, the cluster control link IP. And then it's history. And so we can get some information here. And look, notice if you have a bunch, we can enter the name and get that information. Now we could say break cluster from here and we can upgrade the cluster and then revert back from here if we wanted to and then just the regular other stuff. So this is pretty nice. Let's go ahead and look at the config now. So in here, I want to come in and look. Here's some cluster information here. I can change the name, transfer packs to some regular stuff. I can look at the live status from here. Click that. It'll take me right there. Tell me the license. Change the license. Health. Go to Snort2. Tell me the applied policies. Turn on application bypass, which you definitely want. It should be on by default. So we'll go ahead and turn that on. I usually do that by bulk actions now in the device. That's kind of nice. I start with 7.1. Interfaces and routing. I want to do routing, but I can't edit the interface. So if I look in here, watch this. I say, I want this to be my outside interface, right? I can enable it, which I definitely want to do here, but I can't give it a zone or there's no IP. So I'm going to say, okay. Now I want to hit save. So once I have this enabled, I want to come in here and say, I want to add an ether channel, a port channel. I'm going to name this P01 and I want this to be a new one. Cluster. Okay, so I got a new security zone for my outside. Now I can put an IP4 address on here and say, okay, now before I leave here though, I want to check this out. I want to come under here. I'm in my port channel. Now, depending on what you're connected to, you can leave this as the default, which is LACP, but I'm just going to turn it on because I don't have LACP on my, on my switch. So I'm just going to leave this. If I was in production, I would probably go and make my switch LACP. And I need to come down here to Ether Channel ID 1 and tell it what port it is. And I want it port 1-1. One, one. Okay. So once I put in the name, the security zone, I want to go ahead and create the channel ID and the interface or interfaces. You only have to have one interface in a port channel. In this case, that's all I want. So thank goodness. I'll come down here and see this and make sure that everything is enabled and I turned off LACP. And so I think I'm good to go here. Now I'm gonna come out here and do my route, default route. And I'm gonna say, now that I have my, I'm gonna use my port channel and 192.168.4.1 and say safe and say deploy. All right, once the deployment's done, looks like my devices look good. And we're going to go ahead and do a little bit more. Let's take a look at the CLI. So inside here, though, if I was to open this up, which I want to do and go to interfaces, I want to check and see that my port channel is up here. But what I really want to do is come here and say show run cluster. How about that one? And now I can see that I'm 3120 cluster, 30, 3121 the IP, and so I'm in the first one. I can come to my second device, show run cluster. Notice I can see that configuration, it looks good. Come back to the first one here, show interface port channel one. And we can see that that is up. I can no longer type show interface ethernet one one because that's inside this port channel. But how about show cluster and take a look at some of the different things. The first thing I like to do is info and this tells me where i'm at this is the right in state master and here's the other one serial numbers the ips and then how about show cluster interface mode now not real helpful here because i can only run spanned mode now but show cluster history this one's kind of good tells me what's happening i could look at this every morning see how many times i do that and this is a really great way to do this so show cluster info 
and question mark and notice all of the information in here. But so what I like to do here is the trace. And this gives me information about what has just been happening. So that's a really great command to run and see. I don't look at this a lot, but if I have problems, I will come back and look at something like this. I can now do a ping and see if I can get out to the internet. My port channel is up and running. So I'm hoping you guys saw that this clustering through the 3100 through the FMC, how much easier it is than trying to do it through the 4100, 9300.